Now that we've gotten really good with trig equations and we've gotten really good with trig identities, we're going to actually bring those two topics together to solve equations using identities. And that's going to derive our question for today. How do identities help solve trig equations? Let's take a look at some of the identities that we've seen so far that are important to us. We've seen um, what I'm going to call the tangent cotangent identity, which is basically that the tangent of theta is sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. And that cotangent, its reciprocal, is cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. We should have those two identities memorized already. And they're really reciprocals of each other. So there's really only one identity there, I guess. Then there's the reciprocal identities. And the reciprocal identities take a look at secant of theta is 1 divided by the cosine. Or you could flip that cosine is 1 over the secant. The cosecant of theta is 1 divided by the sine. Or you could flip that sine is 1 divided by cosecant. And the cotangent of theta is 1 divided by the tangent of theta. Or you could flip that and say tangent is 1 divided by cotangent. You should know those three identities as well by now. The other set of identities that you should know are called the Pythagorean identities. And the Pythagorean identities all come from the fact that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. If we divide all three terms by sine squared, you end up with 1 plus cotangent squared of theta equals cosecant squared of theta. Or if you divide the original equation by cosine squared, you end up with the tangent squared of theta plus 1 equals the secant squared of theta. And any of these three equations we can solve for any piece by subtracting off to the other side. But these three identities you should know by now as well. I'm going to add a fourth set of basic identities that you should know. These are called the negative angles. And you should be able to figure these identities out by drawing a quick picture to see what's happening. What I mean by that is if we have the sine of negative theta, and if I think about my unit circle here, we're going to have an angle of theta up. And that's going to give you an x comma y. But if I took negative theta, that would give you still x to the right, but negative y down, which means if we're doing the sine of negative theta, sine being the y-coordinate gives us a negative y-coordinate, or negative sine of theta. So with sine, the negative can come out. Similarly, with the reciprocal, uh, you'd see the same thing, which would be the cosecant of negative theta. It's just the reciprocal of sine, so that negative comes out secant, cosecant of theta. Very similar to those two is if we do the tangent of theta, negative theta. Tangent is y over x. So when I do tangent of negative theta, we get negative y over x, which is just a negative tangent of theta. Similarly, with the cotangent of negative theta, because it's just the reciprocal, that reciprocal behaves just the same, bringing the negative out cosine of theta. So with sine, 
cosecant, tangent, and cotangent, we see the negative just can float in or out of the function. But cosine of negative theta, you'll notice cosine being the x-coordinate up or down, the x-coordinate is exactly the same. So actually, the cosine of a negative angle is the same as the cosine of the positive angle, which means the reciprocal will do the same thing. The secant of the negative angle is equal to just the secant of the positive angle. So with cosine and secant, the negative disappears inside. With everything else, the negative can float out or in depending on our situation. So I guess I've got six new identities for you today to keep track of. Really, there's three. But if you understand how that unit circle works, you can just draw a picture and derive each of these without having to actually memorize them, which is nice. So we're going to use those identities today as we solve trig equations. We're also going to use one extra strategy that we're going to steal from a long time ago, and that's the strategy of factoring. You remember if you had problems like 2x squared plus x equals 0, we could solve that by factoring out the greatest common factor of x, leaving behind 2x plus 1 equals 0. And then we could set each factor equal to 0, x equals 0 and 2x plus 1 equals 0, or x equals negative 1 half. And we'd have our two solutions for x. We can do much the same thing with trig. Just instead of x, you're now going to have a sine of our variable. Let's say you've got 2 sine squared of theta plus sine of theta equals 0. You'll notice that's exactly the same as the problem we just solved. Instead of x, we have sine of theta. So just like before, there's a common factor of sine. So we'll factor out the sine of theta. And that leaves behind 2 sine of theta plus 1 equals 0. And then we can set each factor equal to 0. The sine of theta equals 0, or the 2 sine of theta plus 1 equals 0. And solving that last one gives us the sine of theta equals negative 1 half. The only difference really is now we've got one more step as we do the inverse sine. And we just have to think about our unit circle. For this first function, sine of theta equals 0, we want the y coordinate to be 0. And the y coordinate is 0 on the left and on the right. So that's at 0 pi, 2 pi. 3 pi, you can see that's really just going to be k pi's. At every k pi's, we hit another solution. 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. The sine is equal to 0. For the negative 1 half, the negative 1 half is going to be a little bit down on either side. That's going to happen at 11 pi over 6 or 7 pi over 6. And then again at every circle after that. So we end up with theta equals 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. And theta equals 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. And these all, oops, I forgot the k's, 2k pi. These all will represent the solutions to 2 sine squared theta plus the sine of theta. Now, quite often, we'll be given a domain restriction, like we just want to go from 0 to 2 pi. So if that's the case, theta would be equal to 0 pi, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. And so in this way, factoring can help us solve trig equations as well. Let's do one more example before we bring it together with the identities. Let's do 3 secant squared of theta minus 5 secant of theta minus 2 equals 0. 
Well, this is really just a trinomial equal to 0. 3 secant squared is 3 secant theta times secant theta. 2 is 2 times 1. And if we put it the 1 with the 3 and the 2 with the secant, we can put the 2 is negative, gives us negative 6, plus 1 is negative 5. And then we can set each equal to 0 and solve so that the secant of theta is equal to negative 1 third, or the secant of theta is equal to 2. And then we just have to figure out what angles do that. Well, remember, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So let's flip these over. Cosine of theta is equal to the reciprocal negative 3. And cosine of theta is equal to the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half. Now, something to be aware of, cosine, if we think about its graph, is oscillating between negative 1 and positive 1. It never goes bigger than negative 1 and positive 1. So it's never going to actually equal negative 3. But it can equal 1 half if we think about our unit circle. Cosine, we want a short x coordinate of 1 half. So it's going to be up above or down below, which happens at pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. So theta is equal to pi over 3 plus 2k pi's, or 5 pi over 3 plus 2k pi's. And we have all the possible solutions to this function. If I wanted to do it just on 0 to 2 pi, then we'd only have theta equal to pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And we've got our solution. All right. So we're combining two things today. We've talked about a bunch of identities. We've done a review of factoring and looked at how it can work with our solving trig equations. Let's try and bring it all together where we solve with properties. Let's solve the equation 2 sine squared theta minus cosine theta equals 1 on 0 to 2 pi. The problem with this function is we cannot factor it. We can set it equal to 0, 2 sine squared theta minus cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. But we can't factor it because the sine squared doesn't match the cosine. It would be nice if we could change sine squared into a cosine. And that's where the Pythagorean identity of sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 is helpful. We can solve for the sine squared by subtracting cosine squared of theta from both sides. So I'm going to replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. That'll give me 2 times 1 minus cosine squared theta minus the cosine of theta minus 1 equals 0. And now with a little simplifying by distributing 2 minus 2 cosine squared theta minus cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. Combine the like terms, negative 2 cosine squared of theta minus cosine of theta plus 1 equals 0. Don't like to factor with a negative, so we'll multiply everything by negative 1 on both sides. Positive 2 cosine squared theta plus cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. And now we have something that we can factor and solve because we use that Pythagorean identity. Factoring, we have 2 cosine theta times cosine theta. 1 is 1 times 1, 
We'll make the plus one, the cosine plus one positive, the two cosine minus one, make that one negative so that the middle term comes out correct. And then we know that the cosine of theta is equal to one half, or the cosine of theta is equal to negative one. We're just going from 0 to 2 pi, so we don't have to worry about multiple rotations around the circle. Cosine is 1 half. We actually just saw cosine being 1 half. We know that that's the short distance to the right, up and down. That's going to happen at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Also, we want cosine to be negative 1. That happens over here on the left at pi. And so all of our answers for theta are pi over 3, pi, and 5 pi over 3. Let's try one more problem where we have to use the trig identities in order to solve. And then we'll set you free to practice some of these, because that's the best way to get good at these. Practice, practice, practice. We're going to say the tangent of theta is equal to 3 sine of theta. And we're going to solve it on 0 to 2 pi, just one revolution of the circle. This one might not be obvious at first, but one thing we know is tangent is the same as sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta equals 3 sine theta. Now we've got something we can work with. I'd clear the fraction first by multiplying by the cosine of theta. So we have the sine of theta equals 3 sine theta cosine theta. Set it equal to 0 so we can factor. 3 sine of theta cosine of theta minus sine theta equals 0. And now we're ready to solve this function, this equation, by factoring. We have sines and cosines together, but that's OK because we can factor out the sine of theta, which leaves behind 3 cosine of theta minus 1. Setting each factor equal to 0, we have the sine of theta equals 0 or the cosine of theta equals 1 third. That first equation is nice because we know the sine of theta, the y-coordinate, is 0 on the right and on the left. So that's going to happen at 0 and pi. Our other one, though, says cosine is equal to 1 third. That's not one of our key angles. It's positive, so we know it's somewhere off to the right, which means it's going to have a similar angle down below it with the same x coordinate. But we're going to have to use our calculator to help us determine what is that angle. So on the calculator, I'm going to do a quick cosine inverse of 1 third. That's going to be 1.23, let's call it 1. 1. 0.231. The other angle is going to be 2 pi minus the 1.231. And if I do that on my calculator, 2 pi minus 1.231, 5.052 becomes that other angle. So for our final answer for our angles, it happens at 0 at 1.231 radians, at pi radians, and at 5.052 radians. And we've got our last solutions. So that's what we're working on today, reviewing your trig identities, which you should know all of these very well by now, or at least be able to derive them. Review of how factoring can help us solve functions and putting that all together to solve with these properties. So go ahead and take a look at practicing some of these. Practice as many as you can. The more you practice, the better you will get at them. And let me know if you have any questions.